pleasure of bringing out basically the hottest cast of the entire year. And pretty darn talented too. I hope you'll help me welcome them. Uh, first of all, call sign Cyclone, John Hamm. Welcome to the director of the movie, Joseph Kaczynski. Joseph. Also, I pay back Jay Ellis. <laughs> Fanboy is here, Danny Ramirez. Please welcome Monica Farbro. <laughs> A man who will forever be known as Bob. Lewis Pullman. <laughs> Ione is here, Greg Tarzan Davis. <laughs> Please welcome Hangman Glenn Powell! The man without whom none of this would exist, the producer, Jerry Bruckheimer. And please welcome Miles Tedder! So great to see all of you. Please have a seat. Okay, I'm curious, and so is Mr. Bruckheimer. Who in this room just saw this for the first time? No shame in it. Wow. Is that what you expected, Jerry? Absolutely. Okay, has anyone seen it five or more times? Yes. Wow. Let's go! Has anyone seen it as many times as Glenn Powell's family? <laughs> Is there up to how many? Uh, 20. 20. <laughs> anyone seen it that many times? Is Glenn Powell's family here? <laughs> uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, I'm curious to know, you know, you look at your filmography, it's, it's so lengthy, it's so varied. I feel like the first Top Gun is one of the more kind of ensemble-y pieces that you did over these decades. Did it remind you of that experience when you were helping to put the cast together for Maverick? It's always great when you have a large cast, and we're very fortunate to have these wonderful actors up here with me tonight. I'm so thrilled that they all can make it, because they're all working all over the world. Mm -hmm. They've become so successful since the Top Gun started. But the leader of the gang is always Tom Cruise, and he's the one... <laughs> Works so hard, cares so much, spends time with every single actor. They ask questions. I want your career. I would like this. I would like that. And he spends the time talking to them, working the scenes with them, constantly working on the script, working with Joe. It's such a hard worker. He loves being on a movie set. He couldn't, couldn't, wouldn't want to be anywhere else than in making movies for, for large audiences. And what's so interesting about Top Gun is it was a, almost a billion five, which is enormous that movie. But it was bigger foreign than it was domestic. And what's so fascinating about that is it just shows when we do something right in Hollywood, it goes around the world. It's not a red state movie, it's not a blue state movie, it's a movie for everybody. And that's what I'm so proud of. Joe, you and I are about the same age. You were 12 when the first Top Gun came out. What did you kind of want to remind yourself about how that movie made you feel as you were casting and prepping this one? Uh, well, you know, I remembered uh, that world that Tony Scott created um, and how beautiful the film was and obviously the film that made, you know, Tom Cruise a, a superstar. Um, so uh, for this film, I, you know, I wanted it to feel like it was in the same universe as that film. Um, 
but I, we wanted this film to reflect the Navy as it is today, which is very different than it was in 1986. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing I did is I flew out to a carrier um, after getting the job. I went out to the Teddy Roosevelt and spent a couple days out there uh, and just got a taste of what life is like and, and spent a lot of time with these uh, men and women. And um, as we were working on the script, you know, we started using some of the people we met as kind of ideas for these characters. And, and then, you know, working with Denise Chamian, who's an incredible casting director, uh, she introduced me to almost all the faces you see up here. I mean, I'd worked with Miles before. Um, I'd had a meeting with Glenn before. Uh, but I think everybody else was, was new to me. I, was I, I built your with garage. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, Denise introduced me to all these, these new faces, and uh, we just went through this long process of kind of narrowing it down to the, you know, who, who was up for this incredible journey. Jay, you and uh, John were kind of reminiscing about seeing the lock picture cut two and a half years ago. I think for some of you guys, it's four years ago from getting cast to now. How did you deal with your impatience about wanting the world to see your work and see this movie? Uh, you, luckily, it wasn't just me going through it. I probably would have pulled all my hair out uh, and got kicked out of my house. But, uh, you know, we were all on a text chain together. We were constantly talking. Tom would text us every time the movie got pushed back. We would talk to Jerry. We would talk to Joe. Um, I, I think as much as we wanted the world to see this movie, I think we also knew and were all very um, like steadfast in the fact that like we wanted the world to see it in theaters. Because for those of you who just saw it for the first time sitting in this room on that large screen, it's such a powerful way to watch the movie and it, it reminds us of why we go to theaters, and I think every single one of us, as frustrated as we would be, Glenn had this joke that he was like, I've been waiting for my career to launch for four years. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, that's how we all felt. We were like, come on. But it is so much sweeter on this side now that we actually had that theatrical experience. Glenn, what about Hidden Figures? John Glenn, the SAG Award winner. Oh, how quickly they forget. <laughs> It was your joke. <laughs> oh, no. About hidden figures, man. By the way, you know, Jay actually, when we started this process, he had the voice of a 25-year-old man, and now he's 75 years old. It's been a long journey for all of us. That's how long this movie is Thank you, guys. John, oh, actually, wait, wait, do you want me to jump in real quick? Please. I had one of those, uh, those, those videos, <laughs> Sorry, what? I had one of those videos on your, your, your phone that, like, says, on this day. Oh, yeah. It says, on this day, four years ago, yeah. I have a video of the swim fizz test at Miramar. Oh. It is all of us going in the helo dunker, doing, uh, ejection training, uh, literally, Doing everything in Miramar, we're, we're in the water for six, seven hours, something it's like drowning. that. Yeah, it's <laughs> but, but that was literally my uh, my memory today. So four years ago today. Wow. We all did it together. Wow. So John, I've known you for about twenty years. I was going back and realizing that's how long ago we met. I built your garage. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know you as the kind of lovely, fun guy that you are, but you're such a dick in this movie. Prefer the term antagonist. Okay. Is it is it easy or hard to just turn off your, the natural charm, John? You're not going to out charm uh, Tom Cruise, so it was pretty. Uh, I was understood my 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 role in the in the hierarchy there. But uh, no, it's it's uh, it's not it's it's not that hard to, to do that. It was the part that I was born to play. Uh, in some ways, um, it's it's exciting. It's obviously exciting to be part of the next chapter of this franchise. It's exciting to play opposite someone as legendary as Tom uh, Cruise. And and you know, our experience in doing this was 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 as Jerry mentioned was led by this kind of certainty that Tom uh, presents in all phases. 
So when when the when the mass massive uncertainty of COVID happens and no one knows what's going to happen from the next day to the next day to the next day, the one thing we knew was that Tom was going to land this plane in every way, in every metaphorical way possible. And that was that was the kind of thing that to get back to your earlier question was our kind of guiding star was that this is not going to be fumbled at the goal line in any way, shape, or form. Mm. And the the, the uh, exponential success that it's enjoyed because of that certainty has been uh, an incredible uh, experience to, to behold from, from this side as well as that side. Mm. Miles, so many of your most memorable moments, like it's what my dad would have done, right? Are you playing off the emotion the residual emotion that we all feel from the first movie and that is really amped up in this one too. Mm -hmm. Was that part of what made playing Rooster the most interesting for you? I think so, yeah. I mean, the first movie, and I remember Tom, I think Jerry telling me this, is that when they killed off Anthony Edwards' character, killing off Goose in the middle of the movie, at that, like, in that kind of a movie was, was pretty much unheard of. And it really affected people. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to or have, you know, talked about their experiences saying, you know, when we cut to that flashback of Goose, you know, on the piano, um, at the end when I say it's what my dad would have done, it's really emotional. And Jerry's talked about this, Hollywood, we know how to do action sequences. But for Top Gun, and with this movie, I think why it really resonated with people is the emotion. And so I was coming in... I didn't have to act that. As soon as you know that I'm Goose's son, those stakes are set. And I feel like I was put in a really good position. I thought the character was really fleshed out. Um, and it was multifaceted. And I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder and all that stuff. And then, you know, the third act, now it's, you know, as Tom would say, now it's Butch and Sundance Kid. Yeah, now we're behind enemy lines and it's that kind of two-man thing. So... Yeah, I was really appreciative of all the work that went in before I got there with the writers and and then uh, giving me such a wonderful character and, and Tom allowing a new generation of young guys to come in and, and get some spotlight. You know, there's a lot of people that wouldn't be comfortable with that, but Tom is so gracious and we all had our opportunity to shine in this movie and, and, I, and I, I got a wonderful part of that. I think the, the real success of the movie besides it being beautifully done, is the emotion. Right. And Miles hit it right on the head. It's all about the characters and the emotion that ride through the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Lewis, obviously, like, you have to be a certain type of person to even take on the roles that, you know, all of you guys play, because it required so much more than just showing up on set and acting and delivering lines. It was all of this crazy prep. Mm -hmm. For you, would you say, and I'm curious to know what the others of you think, too, did you take this part because of the, the, the kind of air training that you would have to do? Or did you I'll take answer that. No. 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 Did you almost not take it? Am I traumatizing you with this question? There was no moment where I, I didn't almost not take it. But, you know, they, they even if they had come to me and said, you know, you're going to do this, you, you're you going to get all these incredible gems of wisdom from Tom Cruise, you're going to meet some of your new best friends, you're going to have some of the best experiences of your life, but you are going to have to fill a five-person um, jacuzzi with vomit, I would have still, <laughs> I would have still signed up. Um, they didn't say that, they just said, are you afraid of flying? And I said, I fly jet blue every month. <laughs> No, you also go ten points of security. More of a swimming pool, I'd say. Right. So, so there's one phrase that I've learned, I guess, from some of you guys in the interviews I've watched, and the phrase is called puke and rally. Yeah, so when, right. when you're in, when you're filming one of these sequences where you were actually in the aircraft, you were up there for, what, two hours at a time. So Danny, if you puked, which apparently you did, okay. you yeah. and, and in like, what if, what if you had kind of just started this two-hour stint up there? Did it, did the puke just have to live up in there with you? Well, it's yeah. it, for me. Most of the times, it happened um, at the most crucial points of the scene, um, where you're really pulling the most G's and, and essentially helping the puke get out. Um, but I think the 
<laughs> show us what it looks like. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys later. But uh, no, I, I, in college, I didn't know how to puke and rally. I just I would go to bed and call it a day. But then here, knowing that we were a part of like cinematic history, and if you didn't throw it down the scene, you'd be cut out of like that part. And so okay. you kind of were then like, okay, I have five minutes to level out and just like breathe through my nose and then just throw it like and then just pull seven G's again and then pull them again and again until we get it right. Um, so there was just like this like and I think that was like through the support of everyone here. It was everyone knew how rough it was and knowing that like the moment I land, you take out that little memory card, you plop it into this T V and it's 30, 40 people in the room observing what you just shot. And as we as the, the stakes kept getting higher in the story we started, um, I don't know, we, we'd take notes of everyone's like experience up there and then we'd realize like we're going into this place like blind, we don't know, or essentially like how some, like in a, in a black box theater, you know that you're in a black box theater. On set, in on the ground, you've seen the set, you've done the rehearsal there. So then going through that experience of like not knowing what you're going up to, but then like that camaraderie in the room of seeing the tapes like made all the puking in the world worthwhile. <laughs> Wait, so Monica, talk me and everybody through this. Because when you guys were filming those sequences, you weren't just an actor. You were a camera operator. You were a makeup artist. What all did you have to do besides just delivering your performance when you were filming those sequences? I just want to interject and say one thing she didn't have to do was puke it around. You never puked. <laughs> never puked. <laughs> She rallied us all. I mean, I, I, I've said this a thousand times. I think my experience, people sort of applaud me as if it's something that I did that was great. But I think the people who puked and had to rally and shoot the most high stakes film of anyone's lives. I mean, no one's done like flight sequences like this in a film. I mean, no actor has gone through what we have. And so to have to do all of that and the intensity on the ground was immense, let alone in the sky. And so to, to puke and stow it away, and like you said, just fly around with your puke on your leg, basically, because you can't like flop around when you go upside down, so you have to like secure it and do all this stuff. At one point, Lou had a bloody nose. He like, he's like, hold on, I just threw out right on a bloody nose. And he's like, okay, I'm ready to go. And the pilot who flew both of us was like, he's a badass. I just feel lucky that I I didn't that I didn't throw up. But genuinely, I, I that experience sounds horrifying. Um, oh, but but yeah, we we had to do everything. I, I guess it was sort of in some ways a little more like theater in that all of our notes would come very intensely, you know, in rehearsals before we went up. All of our briefs and debriefs, which we were there for everyone else's briefs and debriefs, even if you weren't shooting that day, you were there in your sweatpants supporting before and after the flight um, and learning from, you know, whoever was going up and making mistakes and not making those on your run. Um, you know, so Joe would direct us in our, in our briefs and we'd been working on these scenes for days and days prior. We would get into a like wooden, <laughs> box that was developed some point there was a lot of trial and error um at some point like after a few flights there was a box built very quickly um to replicate a cockpit so we could go through every single stage because actually we didn't even have two hours up there it was an hour each time because there was very limited range time we were actually flying in the like breaks between actual Top Gun pilots range time. So we had just like these short bits of time to go out there, shoot our things, come back, watch the footage. And so we rehearsed everything to a T. Every minute of our flight was like carefully delineated on these knee boards we got to have. Um, and yeah, we were doing lighting. We were direct self-directing, directing our pilot making sure you know the sun was in the right place because if i flew in the morning and lou flew later that day we had to fly like very specifically different directions to make the sun look like it was a continuous scene with the two of us in one jet so there i mean it just was like the things we had to think about were pretty endless um which you know i mean helped that we had gotten all the training that we did but 
I, so sometimes with like all the flight stuff, like I, th I think it's insane that we all flew, and I think that that is that's unbelievable. But like when I think of this movie, I, I guess as an actor, the one of the greatest things that I learned from everyone here, and from Jerry and Joe and Tom and Christopher McQuarrie, um, was how responsible we were for not only telling our own story, but telling, helping tell the story of the characters around us. Mm. Um, and having very clear points of view of everyone in every scene, because we didn't have a lot of film real estate, like a lot of time to give the audience like full pictures of who these characters were. And yet, you know, all this flying is for nothing if by the time we go on the mission, you don't care if we come home. And that's a mistake loads of movies make. You're like, well, I, yeah, big crescendo, I don't care. Um, we and care. so- We care about yeah. all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, it, it was like a testament to like, like you see Hangman uh, immediately get the darts on the bullseye. He actually did that, worked really hard to make us all look like pilots who have great hand-eye coordination. <laughs> then, like, that really was, was the greatest moments of my life, actually hitting a bullseye. Yeah. On a <laughs> I thought that was the only CGI part of the movie. Everything was crap. <laughs> <laughs> no. He did it. And then, wow. and then our skepticism of him, and then you meet Bob, and you love Bob immediately. Mm -hmm. And then you get to learn that, like, maybe you like Phoenix, because she actually gives Bob the pool cue. So then by the time that you're meeting Miles, and there's a friendship, or, sorry, Rooster, and there's a friendship yeah, why is there. Why does everyone else need to be called by their calls? It's too great. I just can't unsee Miles tell him. Um, it just, it, like, those, those little things, it's the kind of scene you can watch I mean, you know, the writing is beautiful, but you can watch it on mute and understand what's going on. And that was, that's where I think, like, ensemble-wise, I'm actually most impressed by each yeah. person. And also, just, like, shout out to your editor, Eddie Hamilton, because you, you guys are doing, like, obviously, every time you're in a plane, you're not acting a scene. You probably just have kind of these wild lines that are out of context that you have to deliver, and then... In the edit, it all comes together. It was amazing. Um, Tarzan, I'd love to know, you have an interesting challenge that you had to do, which was to make us believe that you were unconscious. Oh. That? oh he was. was. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Whoa, whoa. He was first, first off, I don't get tired. You got tired. <laughs> Um, so if, uh, I, I've talked to Paramount already about getting the best, uh, actor nomination for a bad performance in the F-18, um, no, it, 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 it was pretty intense trying to do that, I mean, we practiced it with our great, uh, uh, Chuck Cole. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced the, the, the maneuver with Chuck Coleman, who uh, was our flight instructor in the extra 300. Um, <laughs> you <eat the> <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, but it, it was very, very much intense. Imagine doing that over and over and over. Like we said, you only have so much time to get that right. And you don't know if you got it right or not because you're not up there with a monitor. So after you do it one time, it's not like you can go and say, hey, Joe, how does it look? No, because Joe's way at base somewhere doing... Forget all. <laughs> Who knows? Because you know you're, you're up there by yourself. You're the only person acting with your pilot and stuff. So it was like, okay, boom, do it. And my pilot was like, okay, you think we got it? I said, I don't know. That's the first one. You got a camera up there? You got a monitor? And he's like, no, okay. So we'll do it again and again and again. Um, I think the challenging part of it was uh, purely not Trump, not black enough. You know, I I came very very close. Uh, Tarzan's being humble. His performance in that scene was one of the first things we shot and it was the moment where we were all like Danny was saying we were all sitting around the monitor and when we saw what he did in that sequence we all jumped up and cheered because we finally had achieved what we were working so hard to achieve which is a real dramatic realistic sequence and they really were diving towards a mountain when he did that and he really did pass out because no one's eyes go in opposite directions. <laughs> I said that to Tom, I said, you can't act that. You can't make your eyes go. Have to do a debrief. And the people we sat around, just like, just the, the pause came up and he's like, cool. Yeah, he wasn't completely with us, no. Tarzan, I think what Joe is trying to say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise. The award uh, <laughs> for sleepiest performance. <laughs> You know, that is, that is uh, I got paid to go to sleep on a job, so uh, <laughs> beat you up.
<laughs> Glenn, I want to know how did you apologize to Tom Cruise after you called him an old timer and pops? <laughs> He's still apologizing. <laughs> what, weren't those improv? He had uh, a whole page. Fossil. Fossil, fossil was the improv. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I did write one. Of, yeah, that, that was actually one. Uh, I, Basically, you go up in the plane, and you can kind of do whatever you want up there, you know. So you just kind of record whatever. And I recorded this line that said, uh, "For all you listening at home, this is how you bury a fossil." Oh, I wrote that, and immediately after I said it, I was like, "Oh my God, Tom's gonna see this." I was like, I was like really nervous. I was actually anxious. I told you because I went to Eddie's thing. And I was like, "Hey, has Tom seen this yet?" We just like totally cut stuff out. Right? <laughs> I was just like ripping on that one on you know one v one with Mav. I really kind of laid into Mav. I really went at it. Yeah, well, you, had a notebook. Like, you had a notebook with like thirty yeah. ideas. <laughs> That's so I, I, I got, I got all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was just like and a they made it into the film. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if there's there's so many moments that I love, but the one moment I really really love is to see all of your oh shit faces when you realize that Maverick is your instructor yeah. after you've been so rude to him the day before. So like we see Glenn's oh shit face. I know we see Jay's oh shit face. We see we see kind of one from you Miles, but yours is a little bit different. But did you guys like, do you, are you like in front of a mirror practicing your holy shit face? Because you know you have to get it right. Well, let, let me say this, before we were all filming, I think this was the beginning of our, our, our film shooting at the, at the time. and. We don't, Tom is not there. So we're doing this one scene constantly and nobody's there when you turn around. They say, okay, cut. But somebody gave word that like, oh yeah, Tom just pops up sometimes so you never know. This is way in the beginning. Well, okay, yeah, cool, whatever, whatever. Uh, so this one particular time, you know, they said, okay, blah, 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 Pete Maverick. And we look and Tom Cruise is actually right there. You know? like, oh shit! <laughs> okay, so I don't. It's not the reaction that made the film, but you're kind of like, oh, he's really right there. <laughs> All right. Um, listen, you guys, I know you've been on like months long of a press tour about this movie and you've talked about the football scene forever, but I don't think this audience has necessarily been here for every Q&A that you've done, so we have to talk a little bit about it. Namely, how much shit John and Lewis did you give everybody else when you found out that you were going to keep your clothes on? All right, so here's the truth about that scene. Let me just say, first of all, the, the way the scene was conceived was shirts versus skins. Oh. That, so was, not, that was not in the script. It was not in the script, but the idea was, I was like, okay, when we get to the beach, I'm going to put half on the shirts team and half on the skins team because we had shirts for everybody. I just want to say I've never felt so bad for a human in my life. The, the way I felt for you when we all got no, yeah, to you, set, and you said as soon as, as soon as I said that, I got, well, first of all, they all looked at me like in a way I'd never been looked at before. Yes. <laughs> they were very angry. Well, and, and then this too, everyone we're also was starving. We were all starving. <laughs> they were dehydrated, they were starving, and they all instantly were all hitting me up to be on the shirt skin. No, skins. Everybody wanted to be skins. Everyone I put on shirts got really mad and flustered and ran off. No, 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 no. tears everywhere. So we ended up saying, okay, yeah, all skins except for Bob. Uh, <laughs> I, I gave someone a. I, was, I wasn't gonna say names. Oh, yeah, I That's not a name here. I'll say, I'll say I, I was gonna. I gave someone a pep talk. He was off in a corner and he was like standing like this, like kind of kicking sand. And I was like, buddy, what's going on? I was like, buddy, what's going on? He's like, oh, I just work so hard. I was like, I, was like you could, I bet you could talk to Joe. He might put you on his skin. <laughs> and then I, I think I went up to him and was like, Joe, you can't do this to can't do this to Jack. And once I realized, once I told Jack he could be on skins, and I was like, all right, everyone's on skins. And then everyone was smiling. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Montage. Montage just lasts forever. That's what I kept saying. I was on the every day. He had some He had an Instagram post of him working out with a private trainer, and he had that caption. And I remember showing it to everyone, like, oh shit. He's going for it. And then at that point, everyone at like 6 in the morning was the at gym. the hotel gym working out. <laughs> and it wasn't just, it wasn't just an in, empty caption, it? though. It was Not like, everyone. I went to the gym. I went to the gym just to see what was going on. To <laughs> <laughs> see what everyone was talking about. And I was all over San Diego. I, I, was, well, I was sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> so what changes when you hit 50. You're like, you're smart enough to go, don't go up in the plane. <laughs> Leave the gym behind. <laughs> have you had any shoes on? Yeah, I was gonna say, have you ever been? On, have you ever had so many clothes on at the beach before? Socks. <laughs> um, I was shredded underneath that. <laughs> I knew it. I think you all know. I need to show everybody. Um, Miles, you, you alluded to this, but you are very convincing playing the piano, doing Great Balls of Fire, and I know that was important to you. Mm -hmm. I know that you actually like met with a teacher to be convincing. My question well, is... I'm playing. Oh, you're actually playing. After oh, yeah. seven weeks, you can play. Well, it's only a couple. No, no. I mean, the song is very hard, and there's no way I would have been able to play it had I not had some... Had I, my mom not had a piano in my house growing up. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was really hard. I really underestimated it. But the hardest part was when you record it. When you're doing it live, you can kind of yeah. miss some notes and stuff. But when you're recording it, it is note for note. You're on the metronome, and yeah, no, that was really tough. That's why it was convincing. Right. <laughs> so, for the others who were singing along, were they rushing or dragging? Uh, no, I'm gonna have to watch the tape back, but I'm sure somebody messed up. That was a total movie nerd question that three people understood. So, thank you for the. Okay, you got it. It just, it just wasn't that funny. That day. Um, Glenn, I not to get like all serious here, but. One thing I really love about you in this movie as Hangman is that I feel that there's this really interesting parallel between you and the character. Both of you, so you did audition for Rooster, and but then you d decided not to be in the movie when you didn't get Rooster, but then you talked to Tom and you kind of developed the character of Hangman. Hangman, likewise, is someone who is not selected, but then comes back and makes this really big impact, as you do in this movie. Um, did you think about that a lot while you were filming it? Was that particularly satisfying? Yeah, there was actually one moment where uh, Charles Parnell, when Hangman doesn't get chosen for the team, looked at me. He's like, you know, this kind of resembles. I'm like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up on it. Um, no, I mean, I, I got to say the, the greatest part of this journey is those sort of dramatic moments where, like, you know, Miles and I did, we were down in, you know, in Florida, like auditioning for this thing and up for the dramatic thing of auditioning for the role and then losing it and then being a part of the cast and trying to find your way and then all being friends and being part of a squadron. Art imitated life and life imitated art in a wonderful way where um, that's Hangman's journey. And that was my journey as well. I, you know, and, and, and it's kind of the most beautiful way. I, I don't know any other way to say it other than it's been the perfect ride. I love it. Let me end with a question for all eight of the cast members. If you if you wouldn't mind completing this sentence for me. Um, I'm going to start with you, Miles. Compared to what I, since Tom Cruise isn't here, we're just going to talk about it. Um, compared to what I expected, Tom Cruise was much more... Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. oh, man, he started. More... Oh, man. Everyone's phones just go up. <laughs> I don't... I don't... I don't know, because you expect so much. He was much... Even more Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom to be. Final answer, move on. Fine. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> oh. Jerry already knew him, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise uses more emojis in LOL than I expected. <laughs> Tarzan. Shut up. He was much more what? He was, uh, Tom. Or you can change the sentence. Oh, yeah, you can change the sentence. Oh, all right. Well, I'll let you go against the grain, babe. 
<laughs> Everybody's like waiting. Yeah. They want to know each of our individual experiences. In habit, I haven't can break the rules, but all right. Um, do your own way. Uh oh. He was much more loving than I expected. All right. Uh, good answer. Aw, uh, good answer. Louis, <laughs> I would say for the man that is probably the busiest man I've ever met. He made the most time for us. Aww. I don't know how it, it felt like he, he grabbed time right out of the paper in the air. Can I take my answer back real quick? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did I inspire you? No, you did inspire me. my turn, and then if you take my... No, 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 I, I promise I'm going to take it. I promise. I mean, no, no. So I'll say this, but no, it, it's, it's your answer, which is, I've called Tom, you, you just you call Tom for something, you say, hey, like, I just need a little advice. You that is the busiest man. Is it right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And you will literally be on the phone with this man for an hour. Oh, this is the same thing. Say all the answers. Say all every single answer. Okay, no, it's just he will literally spend an hour on the phone with you. You expect like, hey, can I just ask you something for five minutes? And it will literally be a chat about all these different movies and the advice and it will literally be a chat about all these different movies and the advice and I made a mistake here, but it turned into this and. You'll literally sit there with this the, the busiest man you've ever met, and he has the most time for you. I, love it. I hate giving a sarcastic, silly answer. He does use emojis and LOL, yeah. but he also has more time for anybody than I've ever seen, and he has the least amount of time than anybody I've ever met. I, I want to change mine real quick. He's, he's very caring. You don't expect somebody to love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, I know it's not. Uh, uh, if you use it in different senses, it's a different This guy is on his cell phone. Wow. This whole thing was supposed to be eight words. Yeah. 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 Monica, Tom Cruise is much more what? Um, well, I, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, he was much more of a mentor than I expected. Um, Caring. It's hard. I mean, it's hard because I do think like he, for, for each one of us individually, has given so much one-on-one -on -one time, as well as like, you know, talking to us as a group and, um, you know, he, he just is like lived this incredible life working with so many of the greats and then becoming one himself and he speaks so humbly about all the people he's worked with and so um it was really incredible to get to learn about you know everything that he's done in a in like a patient calm way and yeah we can call him any time not one word so I'll so many it. words that have already been said well, I agree with everything everyone has said. Um, <laughs> I think he's uh, he's much more present than I thought someone could be with Ooh. everything he's doing. Okay, okay. I we're, just gonna, okay. <laughs> we're just going to hurt people, hurt people. It's actually something that's different. Hurt people, hurt people. It's actually something that's different. We're not going home tonight. He was much more... Funny than I expect. He was funnier than I expected. You just took Davey's answer to the end of my answer. Oh, don't line. do that to me, Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it was a He can't in a room for He was like, time. well, yeah, Tom was. Oh, no, 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 he's funny. He's funny. He's, uh, he's very present, which makes him very funny. No, he's, uh, he does so much, and, and like, when he's there with you, he's. Nothing else matters. He's locked in on whether motivating you, giving you advice. Whatever it is that like he sees exactly what in some ways you need and, and what we were doing was very tough up there and I just kept thinking back on this audio that you played us in the the final act that you're like this is actually what you guys are doing up there and all this emotion and all this love and the, the whole film is going to lead up to this which is the the rawest of all emotion which is I don't want to spoil the audio or, but that was something that like the whole experience is very taxing when your art imitates life and life imitates art. And Tom, knowing what we're going through, his presence and him being so present with you there was sometimes the the thing that helped you push through what was very taxing, both physically and emotionally. Jay Ellis. There's been so much said that honestly, I don't know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest, I... Do you really want me to say it? Yeah, say it again. Compared to what I expected, <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise was much more... <laughs> You, what, what was your answer? Present. present. Oh, present. And then I added. And funny. It's a long way to get there. Yeah. I took it. 
What's yours, Jay? Um, Sorry, Jay, before you go, we were going to go back to work. Yeah, no, <laughs> <Hello. laughs> um, yeah. I, it's, this is, I will say this is a hard question for all of us because I think that um, the answer that every single person is giving is what every single one of us because you don't just experience Tom in one way, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all, what everyone has said, we've all gotten to like interface with him and spend time with him and learn from him in so many different ways. And so I'm going to kind of use a bit of a cop out and say so much more than what everyone has said. Like Tom Cruise is so much more than the most amazing things you can say about a human that everyone on this panel has already said. I like it. And John, take a cop out. <laughs> Well, I remember when I first met Tom when I was building his garage. <laughs> it reminded me. Uh, the longest Q and A this. You know, I think yeah, I think really what Jay said is is and I'll encapsulate it in a similar way. And I will, you know, we all, including everyone in the audience, everyone up here, have a have a have an image of Tom, and it's a, he's a movie star. He's maybe the last movie star. He's he's an icon. He's a He's a he's a cinematic you know thing, but in, in fact, meeting him and then working with him and spending time with him, as we can all attest to, you realize that he's so much more human than you actually realize. You realize there's a human being, not a superhero, not a not a you know movie star icon, all of these things, and he engages with you as everyone basically has said down the line in a human way, and if you have an issue with, it doesn't have to be work-related, it's career, uh, uh, you know, personal, life, thing, whatever it happens to be, he engages with you on that level. And for someone who, as Glenn mentioned, uh, several have mentioned, who has so little actual free time, mm. to, to take whatever that little time is and share it with you mm. is not only really unnecessary on their part, uh, but kind of unheard of for, for people at that level to engage. And we've all heard stories and some of us have worked with people that have had, you know, been the sort of reverse of that. So that was, I think, the thing I took away with uh, from working on this, uh, having this experience working on this film, was was just understanding that at, a, at an incredibly profound level that this is, a, this is a great actor, he's a wonderful movie star, he's an amazing force of nature in many ways, but he's just also a great human being. Uh, and that was a real uh, kind of kind of comfortable feeling to have after going through all of this. Well, we all thank you guys for sharing your time. Thank you. Thank you. So on the show, Jay, Danny, Monica, Lewis, Hutchman, Greg, Jerry, and Miles. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.